Yo, what's good guys? Welcome back to another video. I planned to hold off this review until I used this camera for some professional work, but I'm honestly uninterested in even doing that with my C200 on hand. Regardless though, I've used this camera a ton over the past two months that I've had it, and I think I got the overall gist of what this camera's about. And I think it's really, really important that you actually use a camera for longer than just two days before reviewing it, because some things that you love can quickly turn into things you hate. And especially with cameras like this that constantly get better with updates, you can't really fill out a camera in two days. And when it comes to cameras, I pretty much used all consumer mirrorless to DSLR cameras that are on the market right now, or at least their uh, predecessors, I guess. <laughs> but I primarily come from using the EOS R and that camera had like big, big problems. But even with the problems, of the camera, I still enjoy using it. I found music videos on that camera, short films, mini docs, vlogs, YouTube videos, pretty much every kind of content. But I knew that with the R6, I wasn't going to need the camera to perform in pretty much all of those scenarios because I have a C200 on hand that I use specifically for professional client work. So when picking up the R6, I pretty much just needed a dedicated YouTube camera that can do decent in videos and do decent in photography. I just need a couple behind the scenes photos for Instagram, a couple behind the scenes video clips to document the process of me creating. And that is going to be the perspective of this review. So I just want to see if this holds up. Now in this review, I'm going to talk about the things that I like about the camera, things that I don't necessarily like about the camera, who do I think the camera's for? And just the overall roundup at the end to tell you guys if I'm even gonna be keeping this camera. Now, I know that this isn't gonna matter to most people, but if you have ever used the EOS R before, you know the ergonomics on that camera were just all over the place. Like it felt great in a hand, but it always felt like a budget option, not having a joystick, not having a scroll wheel, not having dual car slots. The R6 improves on all of these things. It also gets rid of the wonky touch bar that the EOS R had. It was such, it was trash. Don't ever bring that back. Another thing about the EOS R that was like super annoying, but it was small, but it was just annoying enough to trigger you every time that you ran into it was whenever you would try to flip the screen to go into like vlog or selfie mode, the screen would hit the microphone jack that was in the port by the screen. Like it literally would hit it. So you have to wedge the screen out, flip. It was so annoying and it's just not present on the R6. I love it. It has a little bit of a smaller screen and the resolution is a little bit lower. It's not a deal breaker, but it's 100% noticeable. So keep that in mind. But Overall ergonomics are totally better than the EOS R. Now I know in the middle of 2020, full frame 4K should not be a novelty for a camera brand. But before these latest iterations to the Canon line, you really couldn't do full frame 4K other than using some sort of cinema camera option. Now I know technically the R6 doesn't have full frame 4K, it's like a slight crop, but it's so small that you don't even notice it. So I'm gonna equate that as full frame 4K. And another great thing about the 4K is it goes all the way up to 60 frames per second, which is tight. The quality of the footage is crisp. It looks really good. Back when I used to use the EOS R, I would film everything in 1080p and I would just scale that up in post, export out of 4K, upload to YouTube. Now the content that I'm creating with the R6 is completely shot in 4K, 4K 24 frames per second, 4K 60 frames per second. It looks good, it's crisp, and the file sizes aren't massive because the codec is IPB. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video though. Quality of the 4K, it's really good though. Definitely something that I love about this camera. The color grading experience on the R6 has been great so far. I'm noticing a lot less banding in the footage, a lot less random color artifacting, and also, the colors are breaking a lot less. When the R6 was first announced, I thought it was a little bit weird that IPB was the only option in terms of codec for this camera. It made me like think like, is 10 bit even beneficial when you have such a small codec? But using the footage over the past two months, I can tell you that the quality of the footage, the color grading experience, everything is better. The footage looks a lot more crisp. Color grading experience is a lot better. And me personally, I never ever can notice the difference between IPB or all I. I've heard a lot of different theories. If you know what the difference is, let me know down in the comment section. But me personally, in every scenario that I filmed in, 
I can never tell the difference between IPB or all I Kodak. So color grading experience is great. Now I am not much into photography. Like I can stop down an image you know, compose a shot, take a decent photo for Instagram posts or a thumbnail for YouTube. But I'm not into photography, so I don't really care too much about this subject. But what I will say is the photography experience on this camera is so easy. Like it's it's almost too easy. The eye track and autofocus on this camera is scary good. Like before this camera, I'm the guy who would you know, select one autofocus point, not a zone, one autofocus point, move that around and try to get it on the subject's eye at every single moment. I no longer have to do that at all. Like I literally let the autofocus take care of everything. I just focus on composing a shot. It's accurate, it's crisp, it's something that you can depend on. So I am a firm believer of autofocus now that I'm using the R6, the reliability of it, it's been great. And it makes the photography experience so much better, man. Now, before we get into the next section of this video, I'm gonna show you guys some sample footage from the R6 while I give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Storyblocks. Now, if you guys have no idea what Storyblocks is, it's an online database with high quality stock video clips, After Effects templates, motion backgrounds, and they also have effects and motion backgrounds and templates for Final Cut Pro 10, which is what I primarily use, so that's pretty tight. Now, for me, I tend to use Storyblocks a lot when I need transitional footage for my projects, or I just need some effects or assets to kind of spice up my videos. Now, aside from all of the things that I just mentioned, Storyblocks also now has Maker, which is an online sequence editor for video templates, video clips, promotional videos that you might need for your clients, all of that good stuff. And the really dope thing about Maker is you have access to all of the assets on a Storyblocks platform within it. So down in the description, there's gonna be a link to take you guys over to Storyblocks. Now, when you sign up for an unlimited plan, you get access to everything that I just mentioned, the video clips, the motion backgrounds, the After Effects templates, the Maker online sequence editor, all of that for one low price, really can't beat it. So head down to the description, click that, get you an unlimited plan, you can't beat the price, man. When I first got this camera, I was so hype about in-body image stabilization, like so hype. It's one of those things that you don't really appreciate until you don't have it. And me coming from the GH5 with that godly in-body image stabilization to the EOS R that didn't have stabilization at all, I noticed it and I wanted it back so bad. But unfortunately, the in-body image stabilization on the R6, I found to be a lot more problematic than it is beneficial. Let me, let me tell you about it. It is absolutely incredible in ideal scenarios completely awful in scenarios other than that though. If you're filming 35 millimeters and up in focal length and you're trying to hold the camera completely still, it's God tier in body image stabilization. I'm talking about like better than a tripod. I know it can't be better than a tripod, but it's pretty much a tripod. Like it, it is incredible when you're trying to hold the camera still at focal lengths over 35 millimeters. It's incredible. But if you're moving at all, especially on a wider focal length, it is straight up trash. Like the warping effect is nauseating. It makes you sick. It looks gross. It's completely awful. And even at higher focal lengths, man, when you're moving, I find that the in-body image stabilization, it's auto correction, makes it hard for the footage to even be usable. It's hard for you to get that natural sway that you get from some of the in-body image stabilization systems like the Panasonic or even using a cinema camera. It's very hard for you to get that look. And on top of that, the biggest problem with the in-body image stabilization system of the R6 is the fact that when you're using a camera that has built-in image stabilization, in order for you to turn the in-body image stabilization off on the camera, you have to turn it off on the lens, which means you get no stabilization at all, which is completely counterintuitive to stabilization as a whole. And it's a huge problem with the system. It's definitely something that they need to update ASAP. It's one of the worst things. Canon, you need to update this right now. This is trash. It's horrible. So while the in-body image stabilization is great at holding shots and keeping them still when you're ex extended focal lengths, like, you know, 100 millimeters, maybe using the 70 to 200, that's great. But beyond that, I find that the problems with the in-body image stabilization have driven me to not even use it. Like, I've tried to, like, switch back and forth, and then I'll have some scenes where I'm getting a incredible stable shot then i'll go to vlog and forget to turn it off and it's just like oh my god i just completely ruined everything so it's more problematic than it is beneficial for me and it's complete l honestly 
Now, when I first got my R6, I put it head to head to the EOS R instantly. And I immediately noticed that the R6 has a way warmer color cast than the EOS R at the exact same settings on both cameras. Now, I know that this doesn't sound like a problem, especially when you shoot darker tone skin like mine's, like it just complements it and everything. But when you pair the natural green tint that some external variable NDs give your footage with the warmer color cast on the R6, it is just a color grading nightmare. I went out and I did one vlog and I used an external ND filter and I will never ever do it again with this camera because it was literally one of the hardest projects that I had to color grade. My skin tone was just disgusting. The warmer color cast can also be a problem if you're trying to match this camera to other Canon cameras. This is the warmest that I've seen by far of any of the camera can camera cannons. The, what the fuck? The Canon cameras out of all of them. And it's not that big of a deal. You know, I enjoy color grading. I like to go deep into color grading, but you know, for you, if you don't like color grading or you're not that great at it, it could be a problem. You know, it could be difficult T in the color grading experience. I feel like I just, I'm tripping right now, but you get it. <laughs> All right, let's talk about overheating. Now, overheating, honestly, 100% truth has been non-existent for me. And I know this is going to vary depending on the user, but for me and the way that I shoot my content, it hasn't been a problem like at all and since i've had the camera canon has sent a handful of updates to decrease cooldown time which has been great like i tend to film in spurts i might film five minutes here i might film two minutes here and then just let the camera go into standby that's just the way i shoot i don't shoot long takes i don't film interviews i just i don't really do that kind of stuff so it's been great for me i think i saw the overheating indication once when i took the camera out for my initial review and at that time i was using the first update so since then the cooldown time has significantly decreased i'll sit down now and i'll film youtube sit-ins up to the camera's record limit which is 30 minutes then i'll see oh i got 15 minutes left before it overheats but the cooldown time is almost one to one so if i see it say 15 minutes that i have left when filming before it overheats i'll turn the camera off for like one minute and it'll go all the way back up to 20 minutes so it's great. Honestly, the updates have been awesome, you know, but it's not for everybody. <laughs> you know if this camera is for you. If you film interviews, you don't want this camera. You already know that, you know, it's just all about knowing what you do and what's ideal for the way that you film. And I know for me, it hasn't really been a problem at all. Now, I'm starting to notice that Canon is like that Apple company of cameras. <laughs> Hear me out real quick. Their products are typically way overpriced compared to the competition. The specs on paper are never as good as the competition, but using the cameras always feels so familiar and they have this ecosystem that just completely keeps you trapped in it. Like with Apple, I'm never gonna send a regular text message, bro. Like I'm never going back to that. Or I'm never going back to using some random file transfer app to get a video from my computer to my phone. Like I have to use AirDrop. That ecosystem that just locks you in, that is Canon. If Canon had not spent the last two decades creating reliable, revolutionary, adaptable lenses that go to pretty much every system out there, all of their consumer DSLR mirrorless customers who were into video would have been left. Like they would have been left. Those lenses and that ecosystem is what keeps people on Canon. That's why people like me will never jump ship. They're constantly revolutionizing lenses, the variety that they have, the fact that these lenses can go onto any system out there, the fact that I have a ton of EF lenses already. This is why I just will not jump ship. And this is like the Canon Apple effect. You get it, you get it. When I think about the R6, I feel like it's the EOS R all over again. It's just a Canon drop that has very underwhelming specs that's just completely overpriced compared to the competition out there. We got the a7 III, we got the a7C, we got the R5, we got the X-T4, we got the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Series, we got the Lumix S5. All of these slew, this, this huge slew of cameras, the R6 just gets completely buried under it because it's nothing exciting about it. It's no headlining feature. It's nothing exciting 
about the R6. The R6 is the much needed update for the EOS R. If you were using the EOS R before, or you were using some lower end Canon Rebel series DSLR, like a 60 Mark II or a T7i, absolutely update, upgrade to the R6, absolutely. It's an incredible upgrade from those cameras. It improves on all of the EOS R's flaws and it makes it a more capable camera. But that is it. Nothing else about this camera is exciting. This is a very, very hard camera for me to recommend to anybody outside of the Canon DSLR slash mirrorless ecosystem. It's a very hard camera for me to recommend to you guys. It's so many other camera options out there in the field right now that have better specs that cost less or they cost a little bit more and you get so much more from that price point. Even though there are certain Canon cameras that I do personally feel that you should probably jump ship for, you know, like the C70s and the R5s, you know, those cameras are great. They're revolutionary. They're exciting cameras. I don't think that the R6 is the camera to jump ship for. I just don't. I don't think if you use another system, this is like a camera that you need to drop everything for to get on board with Canon. Like, no, this is great for the people who are here. But beyond that, I have a hard time recommending this camera to anybody else. Now, despite all of the negative things that I personally had to say about this camera, I absolutely love it on all fronts. <laughs> it's met all of my personal expectations. It's a great YouTube camera, has decent video, has decent photos. It fills that spot within my ecosystem that I needed to fill perfectly. And that's what it's all about. It's just all about finding the perfect camera for you that fits within what you needed to do. So that's my review on the Canon R6. Do me a favor, man, head down to the comment section and let me know what you guys thought about the R6. Are you guys picking one up? You guys gonna FS6? You guys gonna C70, A7S3? It's too many cameras right now. Let me know if you just done buying cameras because I know I am done buying cameras, bro. I love my C200, everything beyond that is just whatever, man. So let me know down in the comments, I'm interested. If you're new here to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. I make content about cameras, filmmaking, documentaries, music videos, I'm all over the place. But the content is cool, consider hitting that subscribe button. With that being said, man, I'm out, y'all, peace.